Hi, my name's Janelle and welcome back to Rosary Apparel. In this video, I'm going to be sharing everything I made during winter. Winter is by far my least inspiring season to sew for. It is just so cold and miserable here in Tasmania for so many months and I often find I'm wearing the same thing over and over. It's just not a very inspiring time at all, but what I have managed to make during winter this year, I am so, so proud of, and I'm very excited to talk you through this little collection of makes I've got here today. Uh, so yeah, without further ado, let's get into it and let me show you what I've made during winter. Let's start with the dress I'm wearing. This dress here is my pansy dress, which I actually released the sewing pattern for this season. I am so proud of this pattern. It is what I like to call my perfect everyday dress. And I honestly mean it when I say I pretty much wear this style every single day. It has quite a relaxed oversized fit, which is so, so comfortable. Um, and it also has a nice amount of gathering in the skirt. And what I really love about this sewing pattern is the fact that it has a little tie up detail at the back with a keyhole opening, which means you can just throw this dress on over the top of your head. You don't need a zip and you don't need someone to zip you into the dress. You can just take it on and off really easily. Again, making it the perfect dress to wear every single day. This particular dress is made from the most amazing gingham linen fabric by Merchant and Mills. I was kindly gifted this fabric by a lovely little boutique in Noosa called Stitch Piece Loop. I went into that shop when I was in Noosa last time, which was about this time last year, I think, and I bought my first ever piece of Merchant and Mills fabric. And then they kindly got in touch with me and offered to send me some of their fabrics, which I was just over the moon about because Merchant and Mills is definitely on the pricey end. I was so, so excited about that and I decided to use it for a very special project and that is the video instructions for my pansy pattern. And this is the dress that was a result of making that video. I just think this is the cutest fabric ever. It's got quite a lilac tint, which if you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know I'm not the biggest fan of purple, but I'm kind of getting into it. I love this kind of lilac shade and I think it pairs so nicely with the mustard tones as well. This particular pansy dress is my midi length version with the longer puffy sleeves. And I think I have to say it's my favorite. I just feel so comfortable in this dress. It just feels really great to wear. And I also think it's quite a bit of a statement because it has so much gathering in the skirt and in the sleeves as well. It just feels really nice and yeah, like I've put a little bit of effort in, but ultimately I've just thrown it on. It requires no effort at all and is just such an easy dress to wear. I'm obsessed with it. This next dress is an example of the short skirt and short sleeve version of the pansy. So ultimately you can make four different dresses with the one pattern, which is fun. Um, this dress here I made out of some lovely pink check fabric from Spotlight. I am so in love with how this dress turned out and I think it's going to be such a fun one to wear during the warmer months. The fabric really reminds me of Neapolitan ice cream. Uh, it's just got those really pastel ice cream tones which I really love. And here's a look at the back as well, again with the tie up detail. Just such a cute dress and yeah. Super, super proud of this sewing pattern and I've already been tagged in some of your photos of you making your own pansy dresses which has been so, so exciting and is the most fulfilling feeling in the world and I'm just so happy that you're all loving your pansy pattern as much as I do. Next I have another coat project that I worked on this season. Um, I decided I needed two lovely coats in my life this year because like I said winter is just such a miserable time here in Tasmania and I needed some nice cozy coats to wear to make it all a little bit more bearable. So I ended up making this incredible pink, super long coat. I would almost say this is kind of like a trench coat. It's so long and quite straight and almost has quite a structure to it, which I really love. Again, I feel like it is a great statement to wear. I think it is just so unlike any coat I've really seen at the shops. Um, and it also has this incredible pink check linen lining on the inside which just makes it so so special. I love using a fun lining where possible, um, it just makes the coat extra special and yeah why would you use just a plain colour when you can use a cute check pattern like this. I just think it is made for such a fun coat and I've just absolutely loved wearing this coat during winter. It has just made all of those miserable days just so much more bearable. During winter I also attempted to make my first ever pair of proper trousers. 
they are a pair of cord jeans and I used the pattern the May Jean by Made by the Fabric Store patterns. I am not a trouser person at all. I was absolutely terrified at the thought of making my own pair of trousers but I kind of was feeling really disheartened because I needed a pair of trousers and every time I went and tried on a pair of cord trousers like this at the store they just wouldn't fit me right because I have quite wide hips and quite a small waist which just makes for a disaster when you're trying on clothes made for just standard sizing I guess. So I ended up attempting to make my own pair of cord pants and I can't even begin to describe to you how well these fit. I ended up making a mock-up version to start with which was a total disaster. It did not fit me properly at all but because of that mock-up I was then able to make changes and I have just made my perfect pair of trousers. They fit me like a glove, perfectly tight in the waist, but super comfortable in the hips. And yeah, I'm just so, so excited about it because I've never had a pair of trousers that I've actually wanted to wear before and feel comfortable in. I ended up making my trousers out of this beige cord because yeah, I really wanted to make a cord pair of pants, but I wanted to make them in a color that would go with everything that's already in my wardrobe. And I have a lot of blouses that I've made that are in the more like burnt orange and autumnal tones. And I thought that a pair of beige pants would go perfectly with all of those shades. And I'm just so, so happy with these trousers. They've got all the details that you want in a pair of pants. They've got all the top stitching, the back pockets, the belt loops, uh, a zipper fly closure. And they also have a fun little floral lining in the pocket as well. And I just love having a little peek at that floral when I put my hands in my pocket. It just, again, it's just something a little bit fun. And why would you go a plain color when you can have a floral? Overall, so, so happy with these trousers. And I can already tell I'm gonna wear them all spring as well because they're just the perfect like transitional piece. And yeah, just again, very, very proud of myself for going out of my comfort zone and trying something I've never tried before because I've now ended up with my perfect pair of trousers. Next up, I have another dress that I made. It's this beautiful collared button up dress that I made with the pattern McCall's 7834. Basically, I saw Ashley from Closet Vomit Fashion wear a dress very similar to this and once I saw it, I knew I wanted one for my own wardrobe and the McCall's pattern was so perfect to try and replicate it. I made it out of this amazing ditzy floral rayon fabric. It kind of looks like it's navy, but it's actually black and white. I really love pairing this dress with a pair of tights and my chunky Doc Martin boots. It is just such an easy look but looks so put together and yeah it's just been such a great addition to my wardrobe because it does feel a little bit more dressed up um, but is still super casual which is exactly how I like my dresses to be. But yeah apart from that it's also really comfortable because it's got an elasticated waist so it kind of cinches in but can stretch out as well like it's again very very comfortable um, and it also has a slight tiered skirt as well which just adds a fun little detail to it and makes the skirt look a little bit fuller as well which I like but yeah super happy with this dress it was a really fun make and totally recommend that pattern if you can get your hands on it next I have a knitting item that I finished this season finally I started this cardigan I think probably a year ago. It is the Hackney cardigan by We Are Knitters and I finished knitting this cardigan probably like at the start of autumn but it just took me ages to get my act together to stitch it together. Um, I don't know if anyone else is like that. I love the knitting process but as soon as I have to sew all the knitted pieces by hand to complete the garment I just procrastinate so much. I find it so boring. This cardigan has been made out of the most soft yarn. It was so lovely to knit with, but it was actually really tricky to stitch up because the yarn is so soft. It kind of came away every time I was stitching the pieces together. So that just made it a little bit extra frustrating as well, which is why I put off stitching it up for so long. But I'm so glad I finally did it because it has made such a cute cardigan. It's super simple. Um, it's got this really nice, I think it's called a moss stitch. It's where you purl one stitch and then knit one stitch over and over, which at first I was really daunted by the prospect of knitting a whole cardigan that way because you, normally I hate doing a rib stitch like that. Um, but I feel like this project has really helped me to be kind of quick at it and get my confidence up a little bit with it as well. 
For full disclosure, I should also say that I was gifted this kit by We Are Knitters um, and it was such a fun kit to be gifted. It was a really fun project to make, super like mindless so you could easily knit this up while watching TV um, and I kind of miss that because the project I'm working on currently I cannot do that so well so yeah I think I want to start a new knitting project soon that is just like this a little bit more mindless so I can knit when I'm out and about and things like that a little bit more easily but yeah the last thing I'll say about this cardigan is it's not too heavy it's quite a light one which I think means will be perfect for spring just an easy one to wear when it's just a little bit chilly but also won't overheat you too much as well and because it's grey I feel like it's going to go with absolutely everything in my wardrobe so I'm super happy about that and just glad I finally managed to finish it because yeah I sure did take my time with this one and the last thing I have to show you that I made during winter is not something for my wardrobe for once and that is this quilt here. I have kind of dabbled with quilting in the past. It's not something I ever thought I would actually ever want to do if I'm honest, but I was recently really inspired by a brand called Project It Me. I'll have it linked below because their quilts are just so incredible, so inspiring, and as soon as I saw them, I knew I wanted to have a go at making a quilt similar for myself. I have shared the making process for this entire quilt in another video, and I'll link it below because it was quite the journey. A lot of you commented saying that diamond quilts like this are not the easiest quilt to start with, which I was not aware of at all. I just kind of jumped in, went for it. I didn't find it too tricky if I'm honest, which maybe because I have so many years of sewing experience behind me, it wasn't too bad. But if I was a complete beginner, I probably would suggest not starting with a diamond quilt like this. But I am just so, so proud of this quilt. It has so many hours of work in it. And I even went as far as to hand quilt all of the layers together which gives it such a lovely texture it's just such a special make and I'm really proud that I managed to do it something I'd like to do that I haven't had a chance to do yet and something that a lot of you commented I should do as well on that video is to embroider my name and the year that I made this quilt into the binding which I just think is such a nice idea it kind of makes me think of a piece of art that I've signed and that way I'll always be able to remember the year I made it as well so yeah I'm definitely going to do that and thank you so much for that suggestion I just think that is just the perfect way to finish off this quilt something else I may end up doing that I wasn't so happy about was I ended up stitching the binding of the quilt on the sewing machine and I think I want to unpick it if I'm honest and then hand stitch it instead because I've just put so much effort into this quilt so far and stitching it on the machine just was a little bit messy in my opinion. It didn't look as good and it kind of lets the quilt down a little bit so when I have a chance I'm gonna hopefully unpick the binding and then re-stitch it all by hand. I just think it will be worth it and will just give this quilt a much nicer finish as well. So yeah, that is everything I made during winter. I hope you enjoyed seeing this small collection. It is a small collection, but like I said, I'm so, so proud of each and every piece that I managed to make this season. I forgot to mention this at the start, but there'll be a list of all the videos I've shared during winter that go through the making process and tutorials for each and every piece I've shared in this video. And yeah, I would love to know in the comments below which of these makes is your favorite. I just honestly can't pick a favorite. I know I say that every time, but it's just so hard it's definitely a toss-up between this dress I'm wearing the quilt and the coat but then the trousers are really good too I just I really can't pick a favorite so yeah let me know your favorites below because I think it would be interesting to see if you enjoyed this video then it would mean a lot to me if you could give it a like and be sure to subscribe to this channel for more sewing type videos like this one thanks so much for watching until the very end and I'll be back next week with a sewing plans video have a lovely day and thanks for watching.